Good day, everyone. For Telesur, I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas, Venezuela. We start off in the United States. That's where protests continued on Thursday after a grand jury failed to indict a policeman for choking an unarmed African-American to death. At least 223 people have been arrested in New York City alone. Other cities have seen similar protests, with the largest taking place in Chicago and Washington, D.C. Police in Arizona also shot and killed another unarmed African-American earlier this week, only adding to the tension that has erupted in the United States following the exoneration of the police officer who killed Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri in August. It's a, it's a disgrace. It makes me sad as a New Yorker. And I think that there should be 100,000 New Yorkers out here right now protesting. One of our, one of our citizens was murdered. According to the coroner, it was a homicide and there were no charges. And for more now on the protests in New York and around the United States, we go to our correspondent Alexandra Hall. Second night in New York, Washington, D.C., Boston, and Chicago in response to a New York grand jury's decision not to indict a white police officer in the chokehold death of an unarmed black man, Eric Garner. Here in Washington, D.C., protesters gathered uh, outside the Christmas tree lighting ceremony in front of the White House and also in front of the D.C. Metropolitan Police Station. They also shut down the 14th Street Bridge for a second time this week in solidarity uh, with uh, Ferguson and another indictment and protests there in Missouri. Uh, throughout the evening, uh, the hashtag Cry Meanwhile White became the highest trending topic on Twitter as white social media users shared their experiences of uh, shoplifting beer while high on marijuana, uh, stealing cars, getting pulled over uh, and getting let go with just a warning and basically committing crimes with little to no consequences, uh, contributing more to this open debate that we're hearing in the United States about how uh, white and people of color are not treated equally by the criminal justice system here in the United States. We're expecting these protests to continue in the coming days and we'll have that information as it becomes available. In Washington, I'm Alexandra Hall for Telesur. Thanks to Alexandra. In Latin American news, now we go to Ecuador where heads of state are meeting for the inauguration of the Union of South American Nations new headquarters in the capital of Quito. Here's our correspondent Liz Scherfius. We're here at the UNASUR headquarters near the equator middle of the world's monuments outside of Quito. Presidents from the 12 member states making up this international body have just arrived for the official inauguration of the building, which will begin at noon. Delegations and representatives from various social organizations are here for the event. Presidents will tour the building and have private meetings and will then come out to where we are now to speak with the public. President of Argentina, Cristina Fernandez, will preside over the ceremony, unveiling the statue of her late husband, Nestor Kirchner, who was the first Secretary General of UNOSOR and for whom the building is named. Additionally, the recently discovered Jamaica letter, written by the liberator Simon Bolivar in 1815, which speaks of South American unity, will be formally presented. Declarations by the presidents will be made throughout the afternoon, and once inaugurated, this building will be the center of regional cooperation and integration. Liz Sherpias, De La Sword, Ecuador. Thanks to Liz. In Mexico today, protests continued Friday over the 43 missing students from Ayotzinapa, despite a reform approved earlier this week, which will allow the government to ban protests. Over 300 people are heading from Oaxaca to the federal district in a caravan led by the relatives of the 43 students. The activists expect to arrive in the capital city by Saturday. Meanwhile, President Enrique Peña Nieto visited the state of Guerrero on Thursday, where the students went missing. He asked the community to move forward from the incident. He also announced a new economic stimulus package for the state. And now to Venezuela, where there are new accusations of U.S. interference in the country's domestic affairs. Here's Rachel Bluthroy. This was the moment that a tight-lipped observer from the U.S. Embassy was exposed by a community media group at the indictment of right-wing opposition politician Maria Corina Machado. What part of Caracas are you from? A working class area? No. No, no. No, no. I'm from the U.S. Embassy. I'm here as an observer. 
What exactly are you doing here as a representative of the U.S. Embassy? I'm not going to give you any more details here. If you have any questions, I recommend that you speak directly to the embassy. The video, which emerged last night, has provoked claims of U.S. intervention and partiality in the case against Machado, who is currently being indicted for planning to overthrow the Venezuelan government. The video was filmed just an hour after the Committee for the Victims of the Barricades handed over a document to the U.S. Embassy demanding that their voices be heard. They are demanding justice for their family members and the 43 people killed earlier this year in the barricades which were promoted by Machado. And in 2012, the U.S. National Endowment for Democracy administered almost $1.2 million to civil society groups in Venezuela, an amount second only to groups funded in Cuba. Machado's civil organization, Sumate, was amongst those to receive funding. For Maria Alejandra Diaz Marin, an advisor to the Inter-American Human Rights System, the observer's presence represents much more than just the U.S. government's bias towards Maria Corina Machado. It's an interference which is not allowed within the parameters of the Vienna Convention. He cannot give his opinion on the internal matters of the country which is hosting him as a representative. Telesur is currently awaiting an official reaction from the U.S. Embassy. Rachel Boothroyd with Telesur in Caracas, Venezuela. Thanks to Rachel. We go to Bolivia now. That's where the government has opened the country's third cable car transport line in the city of La Paz. David Doherty reports. Bolivian President Evo Morales inaugurated the third line of the Mi Teleferico urban cable system in La Paz on Thursday, December 4th. The new green line is the final installment of the first phase of the project, which includes three lines, red, yellow and green, the colors of the Bolivian flag. These kinds of large works can only be carried out when there is economic stability, when there is social stability. This guarantees political stability, and this political stability also guarantees economic stability, including economic growth. The completion of the Green Line, which sails over the mountainous terrain of La Paz's south side, consolidates Bolivia's Mi Teleferico service as the longest suspended cable car system in the world. I honestly never thought I would get to know this kind of modernity here in La Paz. For me, this is modernity, and I am truly delighted and astonished. I feel very lucky to be familiar with the red line, the yellow line, and now the green line. Five additional lines have been announced as part of the second phase of the Mi Teleferico project, which is revolutionizing public transportation in the highest capital in the world. Reporting from La Paz, David Dori, Telesur. Thanks to David. Now we turn to international news. We go to the United Kingdom. That's where hundreds of students have occupied university offices to demand free education. Over 20, 20 rather, universities were taken by students on Thursday and Friday. The protests come after the government raised university tuition fees last month. The protesters say that the takeovers are part of a nationwide movement that will continue in the coming days. Protests began in the city of Warwick and were brutally repressed by police, sparking solidarity demonstrations by students from all over the country. Is, uh, to Ukraine, is, Ukraine, President Petro Poroshenko has announced a new ceasefire agreement with rebels in the east. The announcement comes after the September 5th ceasefire failed to stand after both parties resumed fighting in early November. The new ceasefire will begin on December 9th and heavy artillery should be cleared by the next day. While both rebels and Kiev officials have confirmed the information, the two sides have not yet to officially sign any documents. Friday marks it one year since the death of Nelson Mandela, the former president of South Africa and leader of the anti-apartheid movement. The South African government has organized a series of activities commemorating the life of Mandela, who died last year after suf suffering a lung infection. Mandela was jailed by the apartheid regime with the help of the U.S. government in 1964. He spent almost 30 years in prison from where he continued struggling against the regime until his liberation in 1990.
Around the world, oil prices continue dropping. The Brent price fell to under $70 per barrel on Thursday in the wake of Saudi Arabia's decision to offer discounts on its oil to the Asian and U.S. markets. The drop comes after OPEC countries opted not to cut production rates in their last summit. We end today on a scientific note in the U.S. state of Florida. That's where NASA launched an unmanned capsule to travel beyond the moon. The Orion capsule will fly further than any spacecraft made for astronauts has previously flown. This is the first test flight of three missions before the shuttle travels and the first ever manned mission to Mars set for 2030. One minute, 15 seconds. As always, we have plenty more on those stories and others at our website, telesurtv.net slash English for Telesur English. I'm Cody Weddle. Have a great day.